All right, um, let's get started. So, um, topic for today's lecture is social learning. Um, we'll discuss what it is, and uh, we'll look at some models. And in fact, today um, I will talk about one particular model during the lecture. Um, and Andre will will during the seminar will will introduce you to another what's called voter model. Um, you will work on that. So. Overall, when, when somebody talks about learning, you know, by, by social learning, uh, usually meant changing people's behavior or beliefs uh, based on direct observations of others. And, um, you know, you can think about this you know, as an imitation game in some sense, where you actually try to imitate somebody's behavior, or maybe it's aggregation, which means... Um, you know, you aggregate behavior of other people. You know, sometimes it may, can be adaptation, which means, you know, taking somebody's behavior and adapt to your conditions. And in general, this topic of social learning is, is very popular in economics literature. And it actually, it, economists who was in the last, you know, whatever years has been working on the models of social learning. Now, the, the topic is actually very, very close to social influence. And as always in, you know, in, this, in the field of like sociology, psychology, et cetera, there might be some you know, subtle differences in, in definitions. Um, traditionally, um, for economists, this is called social learning. Um, and I did the following. So you have some sort of society, or in, in, in the simplest case, we do have a network, and that's what we're going to work with, and their local interaction. So a person, an actor, um, has neighbors and can adopt uh, his or her behavior depending on the behavior of the neighbors. It just. Um, there are various ways to set up the problem. In particular, we can even talk about you know, the game theory and, and uh, looking at the payoffs, um, what's sort of beneficial for the person. But the point is um, this process of adaptation um, can uh, go in, in, in many steps. So in some sense, you know, there is a person adapts to the opinion of others, then they can change their opinion based on the update the opinion of this person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also look at this from a slightly different uh, angle. You can think about it in the following way. So you have a group of people, and, um, you know, every person has some particular piece of information. Um, information could be imperfect, uh, but the question is how, you know, using this imperfect information, you can aggregate it through the network so each and every person will, in some sense, will, will have an exchange of information, will update, will improve um, her or his information and knowledge based on the, you know, knowledge in the society, right? Knowledge on the network. And there is no centralized mechanism to do it. So it's not like um, anybody like steps in front of the class and you know talks about things and everybody updates their beliefs and knowledge It's more on it, it happens along the edges of the network, right? So it's pretty much um, you, know, you can think of the exam and you know you're talking to somebody sitting next to you Okay, so you can update your knowledge based on his knowledge, but not the rest of the class Okay so that's, that's the idea of social learning. So it's changing or updating your beliefs or behavior uh, based um, on the beliefs or behavior of uh, people connected to you. And um, you know, in this setting, there is a seminal paper by a statistician Maurice Deroot that was uh, published in 1974. It actually became very popular back then. And after that, for quite a while, it was almost forgotten. Now, this is actually very... I would say very concise and beautiful model, um, and, and the great part about this model that it is you know completely solvable. Now people slowly getting back to that model these days, um, but you know if you're interested in research in the area, this model and sort of its modification can be a very good um, place to start. So the model is actually based on the um, notion of consensus. So the question is the following. Um, well, but consent, by consensus, we mean mutual agreement of a group of people. And um, if uh, we talked about 
you know, certain beliefs that every person in the group carries. It's when those beliefs converge to the same belief, right? right. Or if you know, we're talking about knowledge, it means you know, everybody has sort of got to the common denominator in some sense. So the setting is the following. You have a group of people, and there is interaction between this group of people. And uh, um, each person in this group have an opinion on a particular subject. And the question is, um, can a common belief be reached in this group? Now, of course, if each person, you know, th th there is this notion of wisdom of crowds where, you know, when you have, a, did you guys hear about wisdom of crowds? This is the phrase. Hello, there? Did you hear about wisdom of crowds? Do you know what it is? Uh, the, the phrase? Well, the, the, the idea here is that wisdom of crowds, that what means is, you know, if you have a bunch of people and each and every person has its own opinion, and the opinion is, could be like biased or the opinion can, can be like sort of mistaken, if you take a lot of people uh, and sort of add up and average their opinions because of the central limit theorem, um, you know, the, 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 the random noise will cancel out and the opinion of the group of people is better, is more precise than the opinion of a single person or opinion of a group of experts is, is better than the opinion of a single person, um, assuming that each and every opinion is independent. That's sort of called um, wisdom of crowds. Up here we're in a little bit different setting because we're, we're not allowing people to um, exchange opinion every person with every person, the opinion will be only exchanged based on the network. You can think about you know, negotiations or committee um, that tries to make a particular decision, and there are a bunch of people in this committee, every person has his own opinion, they start negotiating, start talking to each other, and based on the opinion of other people, every person will adjust his opinion. And eventually, either group will you know, come to the consensus and they will be like sort of, you know, the, the, the final opinion, or uh, it, it's not going to happen, right? And, you know, we have seen, um, you know, for example, the, the United Nations organization, right, there's like always opinions, and sometimes they can come up with, with, with unique opinion consensus on subjects, and sometimes they cannot. And the trick here is in the network structure. So the, the, the question that Maurice Derut addressed in his paper was, well, um, in which network structures and what network structures committee uh, can reach a consensus and how that depends on, on the network structure. And of course, you can also ask the questions, okay, if consensus reached, um, what's each and every person's contribution to this consensus? Um, you know, who is uh, influential in this sense? Whose belief, you know, the final belief of the group um, to, to which person it will be the closest? Yeah. Now, as always, this is a model, and so it's, it's, it's a simplified notion of, you know, how things happen in real life, um, but it, it's kind of very, very clean and nice model. So here's what it is. Let's say every person has a particular opinion, PI from T. Now, PI um, measures the, the belief of this person, this opinion, and let's say you know, changes from zero to one. Well, let's say, you know, somebody, there is a committee that votes um, to, you know, hire or not hire some, you know, new faculty um, at the university. And, you know, you can be, <coughs> or a new person at work. You know, you can be, you know, one half on, on this person, which means you don't care, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> or the committee can be like, somebody can be like 0 0.1, which means, you know, very, very, Weak support 0.9 means, okay, well, yeah, let's, let's do it, let's, let's hire. So opinion by its strengths as, uh, can, can go from sort of zero to one, and um, every person has it. Now, it's a function of time, which means um, in the process of discussion, during the rounds of discussion, opinion can adjust. Okay? And, um, you know, everybody has some initial opinion, the opinion of the person comes into this discussion. Now, the key to this model is um, the notion 
of their opinion matrix or this weight matrix that um, this weight matrix tells you how much one person listens to the other person. So <coughs> this TIJ means that the person I listens to the opinion of the person J. Again, um, you know, for different people, you might have different, you know, people you're listening to. You might also have in the group an opinion leader that everybody listens to. Or <coughs> there might be people nobody ever listens to and pays attention to what they're saying. And that information will be encoded in the matrix TIJ. So TIJ is sort of an adjacency matrix of the graph, um, of the graph of interaction between people. Uh, but it is a weighted matrix. It has weights. And those weights correspond to how much a person, uh, you know, listens um, to other person. And again, here important um, to remember: TIJ stands the person I listens to the person J. Now, um, for this setting to make sense, we need to normalize this matrix um, and, and have it for any i, um, the sum for any i, the sum of, over J TIJ has to be equal to one simply because <clears throat> if you're listening to a bunch of people, right, that their total influence on you should not exceed one, right? It's, it's sort of 100%. Um, and the idea <coughs> of the Darut process is um, in opinion update. So on every iteration, and there might be multiple steps, in this process, the opinion is being updated. An opinion of every person is just <clears throat> his opinion, an opinion of the people he listens to. Um, it's a linear combination of, of his opinion and opinion the person listens to um, with um, that waiting matrix. So um, somebody's opinion at time t plus one um, comes from um, his original opinion at previous time, uh, plus uh, you know the opinions of other people he listens to uh, in the previous moment of time, and uh, weighted by uh, the, the the weights from matrix T A J. We're going to look at a few examples. It will be it will become more clear how this works. And the questions would be okay um, if this whole thing will just keep iterating. Um, Will it ever consensus be reached? Which means consensus, which means um, if, if we send um, P to infinity, we we'll do it forever. Um, if whether the Zodas so so opinion converged to, to the same one. So, um, you know, if, if you notice here, there's PI of T, which means it's opinion per node or per actor, um, if it's going to be the same for all of them. So, if you, in some sense, if, if if uh, you can think about opinion as a vector of opinions, and uh, the question is if it converges to the situation where everybody has the same opinion. So let's say, you know, at, 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 the, at the start, the first has opinion about the subject, which is point 0.1, the second person point 0.3, the third uh, point 0.9, the fourth has like sort of person has opinion zero about the subject. And the question is, during this sort of discussion at the committee negotiation, uh, if this vector, opinion vector, will actually become um, such a vector where every value, um, value for every person is the same. Okay, that would mean consensus. Make sense? Okay. So let's take a look at, at a few examples. Now, um, just to remind you again, TIJ means the person I, the ith person, listens to the J person. So for example, if we look right now at the node one, um, what this graph says is that the person number one listens to person number two and puts it like 30% weight um, on his opinion, 
listens to the person number three and puts 30%, well, 33% weight on his opinion. And, <clears throat> you know, confident in himself, you know, on, on the 33%, so stays with his own opinion. Okay? Um, person number two, in this case, listens to person number one and puts 50% of the weight of his opinion and, you know, 50% on his own opinion. And, and, the, and the game here is, um, you know, they, they can start with different opinions. And when, you know, the, the, the sort of discussion process proceeds, which means, you know, um, every person updates their opinion based on the opinions of, the, of other people. And then, you know, do it again and then do it again and again and again. All right. And at this model, I mean, at this moment, we'll consider the simplest model where uh, those weights are fixed and so they do not change with time. Okay. So, you know, you, you have a trust in somebody's, a, some, someone's opinion. Well, you know, you stay with this trust level through the whole thing. Here's an example. Again, we're looking at the picture. Um, let's say initial opinion on a subject was one zero zero. All right. So by whatever reason, let's say if, if it's like if if it's about say hiring someone, okay, the first person said yeah, let's hire, and those two guys said no. So let's see what's going to be happening, um, you know, with this opinion of the date. So that the first. After the first round of sort of discussion, if you wish, right, of the first round of the updates, you know, we start with this matrix, do the update, um, here is a new opinions for the people. You know, then, you know, if you want to do more, okay, P2 is, again, T times P1, um, take it here, multiply, you know, you got another opinion. And, you know, you keep, do keep, keep doing that. And after a while, um, in this particular settings, the actual consensus will be reached which means each and every person will have exactly the same opinion about the subject. And um, consensus means, um, you know, there is this sort of vector again where every value, every element of the vector is the same. And it is a limiting behavior in the sense that um, it, it's, it will not change anymore, right? So the, the iterations, iterations will converge. And that means, you know, if you take this vector, say P20 and multiply it again, um, by, by this matrix, it's not going to change, right? You know, at first, it might seem like an unusual behavior. So this, where, where you take a matrix, and, and as a result, will be a vector that's not going to change. Now, we're going to look at the, at the case where, when, when so, at, the, at a particular case, uh, such a case that this is going to happen this process, the process will converge for any initial beliefs. So the question would be, okay, I don't care what initials belie initial beliefs are, after you know, discussion and iteration, they will all converge to, this, to the same belief. I cannot tell what belief is going to be, you know, I mean, if I, the, the final belief will depend on initial beliefs, but uh, the convergence will not depend on, on those beliefs. The convergence of the process really depends only on the structure of the matrix. Um, here's another example. The first person listens to the second person and listens to his opinion um, and, and trusts him or, or you know, accepts his opinion with the probability 50%, um, I mean, with 50% and, and, and to the third one with 50%. So, uh, you know, this in this case, the first person like literally doesn't, you know, doesn't preserve his own opinion. He totally depends on what his friends saying. All right, and the person number three actually listens also to number one, and the person number two listens to number one. So there is this you know, sort of small sort of friendship network where two guys number two and number three just listens to person number one. But person number one also kind of, you know, being friends with them, listens to number two and number three. Okay? Well, do you think they will converge to opinion? To, they will converge to single, um, to consensus? Well, 
Well, this network, this friendship, ne friendship network is totally dysfunctional in terms of making decision. And the reason is, um, I I'll give you like very simple example, but the point is, since, you know, if this has a particular opinion, they're gonna update their opinions based on his opinion, but then he will change his opinion based on those guys' opinions. It's like the sort of discussion where we're gonna go tonight, right? Uh, you know, which movie we're gonna watch. If you have three people with this sort of um, level of listening to each other, they will never come up to a conclusion to which movie to go. And, and here is a very simple example why this is not gonna be happening. Um, let's say you know, the initial beliefs are the same one, zero, zero. Um, we do an update. P1 um, is P times P0. So here's the matrix, we do an update. Well, um, they change their beliefs now, right? So the first person said, uh, you know, that they had belief one, the second and third had zeros. Now it all, it, it's all flipped. Okay, we do the second iteration of the updates, which means now it is um, these updates. And what, what's happening, we're getting back to original values of the updates. So if we do P3, um, this will again become that, and that will become this, and back and forth. So the, update, the, the, the updates will be oscillating, and there is no limit in here. Now, if you look at this picture, you might realize why this is happening. Well, because we have actually, uh, this is a periodic graph, right? There is a period here, um, and, and, and that's, here is a period, right? Um, period equal to two, and that's why this is happening. So the question we're going to be asking right now is what are you know, the, the necessary and sufficient conditions for the limit to exist and how to calculate that limit, how to calculate that, that sort of final um, value of consensus. And here is an, that, this is an example of graph where it just doesn't exist. So we're going to base, you know, we'll base our theory on a peron frobenius theorem. Um, we already talked it, we already talked about this theorem um, when we discussed page rank, when we discussed random walks. It's sort of, you know, the, the fundamental um, theorem within linear algebra. Um, and here is a version of the theorem that is particularly formulated for uh, stochastic matrices. Now, stochastic matrix is a matrix, it's such a matrix where the sum of the values in the row equal to one. And in fact, this matrix uh, usually describes, um, it, it's a, what's called one-step probability matrix for the Markov process. Now, we're, gonna, we're not gonna talk about here, you know, about Markov processes, but we're gonna use the fact that this matrix is stochastic. Again, I want to remind you that it, the reason this matrix is stochastic is because well, you have sort of 100% of attention and you spread this attention between, you know, your, your neighbors, people you're listening to. And of course, you know, when, when you add up the, the values of attention you can place on, um, on, on your friends, well, it has to add up to one, to 100%. So that's, that's the reason this, um, the, the, the sum um, of the elements along the rows um, is equal to one here. So what's the theorem? Well, <clears throat> the, the theorem states the following. So if we, have a, if we have a matrix T um, that is non-negative, um, that is irreducible, and it is aperiodic, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, what that means. But if that's the case and our matrix is stochastic, then there, is, there exists a limit where you take a limit, you take the matrix Tij, put it to the power T, and what's going to be happening, this matrix will have, sim will have rows that are equal to each other. Now, this is sort of a little bit strange, but <clears throat> um, you will see on an example what, what, you know, how, how this works. Now, indices IJ stands for um, rows and columns. And on the right-hand side, um, there is only index J. And so what that means, we'll get to the situation when all rows of the matrix will be the same. So you take a matrix, you put it in the large, in, in the power, 
You multiply it by itself many times, and all of a sudden, matrix will have rows that are identical. Um, that doesn't happen with any with sort of random matrix. It happens with a matrix if it is irreducible, periodic, and stochastic. And um, in fact, the values of those rows can be found as an eigenvalues uh, for the following sort of for the following eigenvalue problem, where this uh, we'll have this pi uh, pi t. It's an eigenvalue problem um, that corresponds to eigenvalue equal to one, and it is a left eigenvalue. Now. Um, there are a couple of words here. I, I think we talked about it before in the previous lectures, but just to remind that irreducibility for the matrix means that the graph is strongly connected. So you can get from every node to every other node. And a periodicity means that the greatest common divisor of the lengths of the cycles in the graph um, is one. So there is no cycles. Or I mean, I mean there are cycles, but but the greatest common divisor is one, so you can you don't have the cycles of like you know two, four, six, etc. Steps. <laughs> um, let's look back um, at, the, at the at the things we did here. Um, if you notice, um, this graph is strongly connected, so you can get from any node to any other node. Well, the matrix is stochastic, so things are adding up to one every row. Um, the graph is strongly connected, and it is a periodic. Why is it a periodic? Well, because um, so here there is a period, right? Um, the value of this period is two, uh, but here uh, you can get back in one step. So the greatest common divisor here is one in terms of the periods of the cycles in the matrix, right? So there is a cycle that cycle. Um, there are no more. I mean, well, there are also cycles here and here. They all have. Uh, period one. If we look at this picture, if we look at this picture, um, actually let me, okay, so if we look at this picture, um, we see that, um, yes, the matrix is stochastic, so it sums up to one. The graph is strongly connected. You can get from every node to any other node in this graph, but it is periodic because we have a this is one cycle, this is another cycle, the period of this cycle is two, the period of the cycle is two, greatest common um, divisor of that is two, so it is periodic with a period of two, um, so the theorem doesn't work. I mean, it works and says there is no uh, limit. All right? Okay, so just, you know, what it means, you know, in, in sort of in practice in, in, in real life. Well, the theorem says the following. If you take your matrix and put it in the power T, and you like literally take, start multiplying the matrix by itself and do it many, 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 many times, eventually the matrix will converge to the situation where all rows are equal. All right? Now, why is this important to us? Why, you know, we actually care about this property? Well, we care about it because of the following. If we consider this update equation, so P from T is, you know, T times P T minus one, then of course, um, you know, you can sort of unroll this backwards and, uh, you know, this will be T squared uh, on P times T minus two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it is t to the power t um, of p naught. And if I want to see what's limiting beliefs are p infinity, so what happens here when time goes to infinity. So I take the, I could in fact look just at the expression. It is limit t to the power um, matrix t to the power little t times p naught. And since p naught is just that initial values, the values of uh, initial beliefs, um, the, the, the sort of the, the key of the process is in here, in taking the matrix to the power. And um, peron frobenio theorem, or again for, you know, because it, it, it's stochastic matrix and so um, from the 
point of view of Markov chain theory, this is called fundamental theorem of Markov chain. Um, it tells you that this limit will converge and every row in the matrix will be the same. If that happens, watch, if that happens, if every row is identical, then when you multiply that by some initial beliefs, because we're looking at P infinity, right? So we need to do this, it's that and that. Since every row is the same, when you multiply this by this, you get some number. But you get exactly the same number for the second row and you get exactly the same number for the third row, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if this convergence happens, if this limit exists, then the final belief vector, P infinity, will have all its components, all the values will be the same. So it will be consensus. And, and the real question is, okay, well, you know, when this is gonna happen? And this Peron Fermino's theorem gives us an answer. The answer happens when the matrix is strong and connected uh, and when it is um, a periodic. And now it's non-negative just because, you know, the way we, we formulate the problem. And the other important piece is the following. Yes, we can actually take the matrix and multiply by itself many, many times until the values stop changing. But the theorem also tells us that eventually these values, it's just the elements of the left eigenvector um, of that eigenproblem, P times T equal P lambda. And that's, they will correspond to lambda equal to one, to the largest um, eigenvalue. It, honestly, the first time I saw that well, was a while ago. I was like, hmm, interesting. I don't buy it. And so I actually took MATLAB and started just multiplying matrices, right? <laughs> and and when, when you actually take the matrix that satisfies this condition, um, yeah, it does do it. So here is a simple example. I take the matrix, the original matrix, you know, we looked at today, the, the first one, this one third, one third, one third, and just, you know, put it to the 20th power. You know, why not? Well, that's what you get. You actually get that every row of the matrix is the same. Um, and, and of course, um, if you do that, um, and this is our initial uh, P0, then the final beliefs will be that matrix, you know, the, the, the limit, which is in this case, um, you know, reached pretty quickly after like sort of 20 iterations. Um, P0, we will get a vector of final beliefs. Now, important to notice that this, these values, they depend only on the matrix. So they depend only on the connectivity patterns and on you know, who, you listen, who listens to whom in, 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 in this committee. Um, the initial conditions are here. And so the convergence to this final limiting belief happens independent on initial beliefs of the people. It really depends on the matrix structure. But the value to which the, the committee converge, of course, depends on the initial beliefs. And, uh, you know, again, with, with MATLAB, it was a small matrix. Yeah, it's easy to put into the 20th power. But, uh, you know, if we're dealing with a graph of size of you know hundreds or, or thousand nodes, uh, you know taking a matrix you know size hundreds and, and putting it in twentieth power is not such an easy task. Um, the solution comes from um, eigenvalue problem, so it's you know an eigenvalue problem, eigenvector eigenvalue problem. We take this original matrix and find left eigenvalues, um, and uh, I'm sorry, left, left eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So the matrix three by three, we have three eigenvalues. Um, we take the eigenvalue that is the largest one, which, is num which has the value one. It has to have the value one, um, in this case, following the, the, the peron frobenius theorem. And we'll take the eigenvector, vector that corresponds to that eigenvalue. And that's the vector that uh, will be the rows of the matrix when it converges. So the, the theorem is extremely powerful. Does this all make sense?
All right? Have you seen those? Have, have you worked with stochastic matrices before? Okay, so we've seen, seen those matrices. Cool. Um, all right, so that's pretty much the, the sort of the essence um, of, of the Deroot uh, method that um, you, know, you, you have a graph, um, and for this graph, you're finding um, for this matrix uh, that corresponds to the graph matrix of beliefs, you know, you're finding eigenvalues, eigenvectors, um, and take the eigenvector that corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. Now, important here to remember that we're doing, we're looking for the left eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, which means, you know, if you again just use MATLAB, for example, um, by default it will, of course, look for the right eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and so you'll need to do, you know, to use a transpose operator. Or, you know, if you use a Python, um, you know, it behaves the same way. So, here comes the question, and I mean, that, well, the answer to the question of the social influence. Um, again, does P infinity is just uh, the limiting case of t to the power t times p naught, what we found, what we just did. And um, let me get, sorry, get back here for a sec. Um, you know, we realize that this p infinity um, is just a dot product of um, any element of, of this row times two initial beliefs, right? So the final belief can be written as a dot product of an eigenvector, which is the row of that matrix, times the vector of initial beliefs. It's a dot product, just multiplying by you know, pi times, times those values. Which you can actually interpret the following way. These are initial beliefs of different people. And they're linearly combined to get the final belief of the entire group. The coefficients that I use to combine them, they can be thought of an influence factor. Well, because, um, you know, this is initial belief. You multiply it by, by this number. It, me it really means how much of the contribution in, in the final score, uh, you know, that initial belief will have. And that's why this vector, the eigenvector, um, is called an influence vector. And so in this case, you know, in this particular form of committee, um, the, the second and the third uh, person, you know, this node and this node, they have a higher value of influence within the committee than, than this guy. Because their beliefs will be taken into account with a higher weight eventually. And that influence vector, again, it's an eigenvector of the matrix, so it really depends on the, on the structure of the matrix. It doesn't matter you know, what idea you, th what, what sort of, what's being discussed. It's all in the structure, um, in, in this belief structure. All right, any questions so far? No. Good. So, question for you guys before we move forward. This whole thing, this whole story with sort of iterative updates um, on the graph, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, we've done it many, many times already, right? And uh, previously, we, you know, when, when did we talk about, when did we do this before? I mean, what kind of algorithms we looked at um, that sort of have the same feel of iterative updates? There have been lots of them. So the previous modules, the, the, the idea of centrality, right? There was a cut centrality, eigenvector centrality, um, the importance of the nodes. Um, we talked about page rank, right? Which is iteratively updated, sort of the, 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 the value of importance of the node. Um, we talked about, more recently, we talked about random walks on graphs, also iterative updates. So intuitively, there should be connection in between those things because, well, it, it's just, you know, it's just a matrix that represents the graph and, and you just iterate it. So, you know, th th there should be something in, in there very similar. And in fact, it is. Um, now, one important point is that 
in, in this model, the roots model, Tij is not just an adjacency matrix. It's an adjacency matrix that carry weights, right? And these are the weights that being assigned to edges based on, um, you know, the, the, the belief, well, based on how people listen to each other, like, for, or, or, or on their trust, or um, they, for example, here's the weight is one third, one third, one third. This is how the first person um, trusts the neighbors. And, and here is the weight, um, you know, three fourths trust in yourself and one fourth trust in this neighbor. When we talked about page rank, or we talked about the, the centrality, the sort of cuts, Banasic centrality, um, you know, there was no weight in, 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 in that settings, we just had a matrix. But let's take a look um, at, at this graph. This is also a graph um, with a, a sort of social influence problem. I just sort of simplified it, and, and I'm looking at a sort of much smaller graph, and I assigned weights on this graph, not just sort of randomly, but equally in between edges. So in this case, and this is a very, very simple case, you can, of course, make it much more complicated graph, but the point is that, you know, the person one actually trusts equally to the person two and person three. So it's weight one half. And, and here, edges is only from three to two and from two to one, and the weight there is one. Um, if we look back onto, let's say, this picture and try to, you know, convert it into the same situation. Well, we'll just need to have here not one fourth and three fourths. I will need to have say one half or one half. And though there are self loops here, um, I mean it will work even with self loops if needed. The point is, you know, the, the weights should be equal. If that's the case, um, you can actually think of the pin updates in in the following fashion. Look, uh, pi is, you know, this is our opinion update vector. But if the weights are equal, if the weights are equal here, we can actually write this Tij matrix as an adjacency matrix divided by the node degree, by our degree of the node i. Um, the reason for that is the following. Look, there is node 1. It has out degree 2, right? The out degree for this guy is 2 because it has two edges coming out of it. So, you know, the, the matrix T has weights 1 half and 1 half. So it is just Aij divided by Di. All right? Then, if we go from, you know, from adjacency matrix, you can write it, the, the equation for opinion updates and, and the eventual equation for eigenvector it will be this pi, um, tijpj, or this guy with matrix. If I write it in the matrix notation, that's the equation. So that's the equation for opinion updates. It's a right eigenvector um, of that equation, the, the final opinion. Now, if we go back, uh, you know, to eigenvalues, I, I, if you go back to eigencentrality or, for example, to page rank, the idea of page rank was, was the following, um, that the rank of, of a node is coming from the rank, ranks of its neighbors, right? The rank of a node, we're looking on incoming edges, um, there is node i, node j, and the rank of the node i will be the rank of the node j, times the, the, the edge from j to i. And remember that in page rank, the way we sort of set it up, um, the, the, the amount of you know, rank that's being transferred from the node j to node i depends on to how many more nodes the node j um, delivers its rank. And um, what we do here, if, uh, you know, the the, the connectivity pattern is a j i, which means there is a connection between j goes to i. Then the eighth, eighth node will get a j i divided by d j um, value of the rank. So that was a standard page rank equation, how we derived it. It's also the same 
if we think about the random walk on this graph, you know, if, if random walker sits on this node, then the probability that it gets on this node depends on, of course, the transition. But since from here, um, the, 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 the random walker can go to, like, say, several ways, um, you need to divide, not, need to normalize, but at no degree. And, and so if you just take that and put it in here, um, that's what's going to be there. And um, this can be written in the matrix form in the following way. So if we have equal weights on, this, on, on, this, on, on those edges, you realize that in both cases, we're looking at the same matrix, this D minus 1A. It just in one case, it is the sort of the influence thing. And in another case, it's sort of traditional page rank matrix. And so what we find here is a page rank value. But now I'm going to go back for a sec and think, OK, if this was the matrix T, and that's sort of the same matrix, what's written there is, is you know, this equation, R equal R times T. But if I go back for a sec, I realize that, well, this is the same equation um, as finding the influencers. And this P vector is the vector of influencers. So this vector is really equal to the, the page rank um, with sort of zero teleportation, or equal to, you know, if you wish, to the probabilities vector for random walk. So that's all kind of start making sense. Because page rank, we, we claim from the very beginning that page rank measures the importance of the person, right, in, in, in the network. Well, this tells us that if you have this sort of the voting procedure, the opinion of these people who have this higher page rank will, will, will be much more important. So that's a connection. Now, this connection is sort of clean and works if you put um, equal weights on edges. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be the case, uh, of course, uh, but that, that again, we've we done it only for, for the sake of sort of making parallel in between what we did before and, and, and this problem. Sort of in general problem of, you know, the root model, the weights are on the edges are not the same. All right? Any questions so far? Okay, so what happens if um, what happens if the graph is not um, strongly connected? Well, there has has been some you know research done in that case, and um, the, the 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 results uh, are known, for example, for so-called closed sets. Now, set of nodes is called a closed set is there is no direct link from, the, from that set to the outside of that set. So, you know, there, there is a set of nodes. It's closed if there are only direct link inside, but um, there is no direct link from this closed set to the outside world. Now, on this picture, there are quite a few closed sets. But we're going to be interested in the closed sets that are strongly um, connected. And in this case, we have a, <laughs> this, this set. Th this is a um, set of nodes or subgraph that is strongly connected. You can get from any node to, um, in, in this um, subgraph to any node in that subgraph. And there is no um, outgoing edges. So this forms a closed, uh, strongly connected closed set. And um, here is another uh, strongly connected closed set. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's just one node, uh, but it, it is a closed set. Now, these guys, <clears throat> they're not a closed set because, well, they're not strongly connected, and, and uh, you know, there, there are ways out from that. But there is no way out from here, neither from there. So um, the, the, one of the sort of proven theorems states that if you have a set of nodes that are strongly connected, that are closed, and aperiodic, 
then it will converge within that set, the opinion will converge to <clears throat> consensus. So what's going to be happening in this case is, you know, this yeah. node will have its own consensus, and these three guys will converge to their consensus. So there will be consensus reached among those three nodes. And, and th there will be some values in between here. So in some sense, if we take, you know, this original opinion vector, then after a lot of iterations, um, three, four, and five will have the same values. One will have its own value of consensus that will stop changing after a while. And so that's what this theorem tells us. So if you have a group um, that is not strongly connected, um, but there are subsets that are strongly connected, subgraphs that are strongly connected, and they're closed and aperiodic, then consensus independently will be reached in each of them, and there will be different consensuses. So it means you know, the entire organization will not reach a consensus, but there will be two you know, groups with two opinions. Okay? So in some sense, you, know, you, you probably, I don't know if, 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 if you had those classes from um, Aliskerov, but this is uh, a, a lot about um, sort of, uh, you know, a lot of about, not only, you can make a parallel here um, in between like this and voting and the formation of alliances, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's a very rich literature that connects those subjects in economics. Um, so, but that's how you deal with the cases when a network is not, um, is not strongly connected. So you, will, you can, there still can be consensuses, but they will be in the subgraphs that are strongly connected. Now, this, this is sort of the, the very original model. And, um, you know, it's simple, but the good news about it is, you know, you can completely analyze it. There has been proposed very many updates to this model. Uh, some of them, like this time varying update, the idea here is the following. You know, you do P of T, uh, it starts P T minus one, um, and, and here is this sum coefficient that is actually changing with time. Now, T hat is our traditional, this is the matrix we started with, um, and, and the point is, um, you know, this one minus lambda and I, I really means um, diagonal matrix. So what it says is the following. With time, uh, every person can change the, the importance of his or her own belief. Because again, when you have this matrix, right, matrix T and, and you multiply by the, the, the belief vector, what's on the diagonal here? corresponds in the graph to, you know, self-loop of the nodes. And what this does is modifying the, the values of the diagonal of the matrix with time. And so what it says, as their sort of updates proceed, you know, as, as a discussion proceeds, people can put, in general, more or less weight on their own beliefs as they change, right, and depend more on, on, some, on, on other people's beliefs. Um, here's another version of, um, of this process where, um, and it's actually, I think, pretty realistic, um, where in, in the matrix, the matrix exists not only between sort of, always between people you, you trust, right, but only in the case where your opinion with this person are quite similar. So this is very realistic. You're actually, in, in a discussion, on an argument, you are more tend to listen to someone who has opinion similar to yours and ignore you know, the, the opposite sort of side of the argument. And so that's what it says. It says TIJ, uh, the, the, the matrix, the sort of the, 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 the listening matrix, the, 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 the trust matrix, is really depends on the distance between opinions. So if at that particular moment in time, opinion I and J um, is no further than D apart, well, 
you know, we're going to listen to, to, the per, to that person. And if it's, you know, more than that, ignore. And so that means the matrix is dynamically being updated on every iteration. And you start more and more listening to the people who close to you in opinion and stop listening to the people who sort of diverge from you uh, with their opinion. Um, I, I think it's a pretty cool model. Um, now, there, there is, because of this sort of, you know, absolute values, there is discontinuity in this model. You can actually do, um, you know, do sort of better, smooth model by just saying, okay, well, let's, let's just make an exponential function and opinions will actually just have a sort of exponential decay um, depending, again, on the distance between opinions. If somebody has opinion very close to yours, um, you, you form a very strong bond with that person. If the opinion is diverging, well, this is exponential decay, so the values of TIJ goes to zero, and that means, you know, literally the, the, you know, the network, the connection disappears, right? Um, so both of them, both of those things, uh, really sort of discuss or, or, or use this idea of the fact that you're listening to someone, you know, who you want to listen, literally, right? Um, whose opinion is similar to yours. And um, th there are some work that shown that under certain conditions, um, consensus can actually be reached in this model. Now, it's much, much harder to show um, simply because, again, now we get like sort of non-stationary matrices, right? And, and a simple... Uh, Peron Frobenius theorem doesn't work here anymore. Uh, but these are, you know, extensions. Uh, in fact, you can do a lot of things with this model. And, and one of those things is this notion of, as we started talking today about this wisdom of crowd. So taking into account collective opinion of, of a group of people. And, and for example, the question you might want to ask is the following. Let's say we have all this group, we have a group of people and each person has his own opinion. And we can calculate, you know, average opinion uh, for the group of people, right? Just think about it this way. Everybody shouts his opinion, and we just sort of average it out. Or we can, you know, take a network and sort of update opinions iteratively where every person listens on it to the neighbor and, and you know, based on, um, on the weights. So the question is, if with a particular network structure, this... Uh, committee or this, this group of people converge to the opinion, will that opinion will be the same as sort of average across a group of people, or would it be different? So what do you think? Is this clear what I'm asking? Uh, so we can either, each of you can have some opinion on, on, a, on a subject, and you can either just sort of shout it and we just average it, or I'll let you discuss it between yourselves, and sort of iteratively converge to certain things. Uh, will those two things be the same? Will you come up to the same conclusion? Uh, I think first, first you'll be better. Well, it, you know, it depends on what you mean by better. Uh, the answer is, at some, in, in some situations, you might converge to the same conclusion. It, it really depends on the structure of the graph, of, of the, um, you know, the, the committee. And for example, if you have an opinion leader, and this is sort of the picture for an opinion leader, which means um, there is a person everybody listens to, like there's a central person number one, um, and everybody listens to him, right? right. Um, and he also listens back, but he listens to, um, you know, every person in, in this group. So in some sense, though, you know, the values, here is delta is, you know, you just put some, some value. You, you listen to yourself um, or your, your own sort of beliefs, one minus delta, and you listen to um, others with delta. The people are identical, but the structure is, is arranged such a way that all those nodes two, three, four, five, six listen to node one, and node one listens actually to, you know, each of them. Um, he spends the same attention that each and every of those nodes, but his attention is spread among those um, six nodes, and so the influence of each and every of those six nodes on node number one is less than his on them. And this is just sort of a <clears throat> you know, particular structure to des design to just show you this, this, this idea. 
what's going to happen is the following. If these people have different opinions, the opinions of these guys, of these guys, when listened by the central node, will average out for him. <clears throat> but his opinion, his opinion will transfer to them without any modification because they listen only to him and to themselves. And so he will have a dominating effect in this organization. And, and so in this case, in this kind of structure where you have a strong opinion leader, you know, based on, on the structure of the graph, um, the, 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 the idea of this wisdom of crowd, uh, so the result of averaging versus the result of this discussion will diverge. And the opinion of the central person will, will be dominating. Whether it's good or bad, <clears throat> it's a different story. But it's very clear that <clears throat> with a sort of iterative discussion, you can get very different results from just sort of averaging um, over um, the entire group. And you can build a lot of things here. You can actually take this model and, for example, um, you can model a media. How would you, how would you model here um, influence from the media? So the point of the media is that media can influence you, right? But you cannot influence media. And media influence all the people um, you know, who listens to it. So if there is a media node, it would mean the following, that, there is, that everybody here listens to that node to some extent, but cannot change the opinion of that node. So the opinion of that node is immutable, but everybody listens to that node. That's sort of the media modeling in, in, the, in this situation. And so you can actually take this model and, and play, um, you know, modeling very different ways to affect the, the sort of the committee, right? Or it's, you know, chairman of the department came to the committee and, well, everybody listens to him and he can, they cannot modify his opinion, but everybody has to take into account his opinion. So um, that's, that's the sort of the, the idea here. So that was it with, with uh, the root model. Now, there are, in fact, uh, after that, there has been a lot of, well, similar model proposed. Um, in fact, there are there a lot of work done by Noah Fredkin, who is a sociologist. I believe he's a sociologist um, on, on this type of problems. Now, he called it social influence networks. Though originally it was, you know, we, we talked about learning, but again, the sort of the, the notions are very close. So the way he modeled things was the following. And, and now, when you look at this equation, you kind of... Uh, can probably realize what's, what's, what's done here. Um, instead of P from T, uh, I use notation Y from T just, you know, to make sure we realize that these are different things. Um, but Y of T is again a vector of somebody's opinion, opinions um, at some moment of time. And, and so it's again a vector and per person there is an opinion and it, it, it goes from zero to one. Um, the idea is the following, that, oh, actually not from zero to y, I think this model can actually be even bigger than that. But, um, that's, that's actually a good question. So the idea is the following, that opinion at some moment t is based on opinion of others at the previous moment of time plus the initial opinion of every person. So in this model, people are very stubborn and they always kind of, you know, come back or on, on every discussion, they kind of, you know, grab and, and anchor to their original opinion. Um, and, and the matrix is here has the following meaning. Um, the matrix T is the same um, interpersonal influence. It's the same matrix as uh, we did with the root model. But there is also additional matrix, um, matrix of actors' susceptibilities to interpersonal influence. So the idea is, um, if you notice, you know, it, it's easier to understand this if you look at, at, at this um, 
um, at these brackets. What it says is a diagonal matrix minus diagonal matrix. Um, I is identity matrix. D is this diagonal matrix of susceptibilities to interpersonal influence, um, which really means, okay, how much of the original beliefs will person preserve through each and every iteration? And in order for this thing uh, to be sort of correctly scaled, um, you know, you need to multiply by that matrix here. So this sort of, you know, the, the enhancer uh, for the original uh, for, for the original personal beliefs, and that's why the matrix is diagonal, uh, because again, diagonal corresponds to self loops in that graph. You know, this is the model Noah Fred can build and sort of you know did lots and lots of publication. I think there is even a book on the social influence based on that model. Um, and so idea um, eventually will be the same. Okay, let's see. Let's you know let's take this update rules and see if we take t goes to infinity, which means we just you know keep updating. Um, what are we going to get as a final you know beliefs in this network? Um, so we take this limit, you know, it becomes um, the following um, equation, and you can actually solve it. Now, you cannot always solve it. There are like you know lots of constraints here when this is solvable, when this is not. Uh, but overall, you know, it's a linear system, and um, under certain conditions, you can solve it. Now, what's interesting in this model, um, you, 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 most often you will not reach a consensus, which means this y infinity, contrary to what we did with the root model, um, can have, you know, will have different values. Now, it will be limiting values, which means they stop changing after, you know, when you do iterations. So they will converge under some constraints, they will converge. But it will not be consensus. The consensus would mean that all of them equal to each other. And one of the things that can be shown in this, in this type of, of research, in this type of model, that this fact that people goes back to their original beliefs, and that's what's sort of in here, right? So every time on every iteration, someone goes back to his original stuff. That actually prevents from reaching consensus. Which, you know, sort of makes sense, you know, if you're stubborn and whatever, it doesn't matter what discussion, you know, what people trying, however people try to convince you, if you every time kind of saying, yeah, 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 but, and going back to your original statement, most likely this committee will never converge to consensus. And so that's sort of the, the output of the model, but in fact, uh, uh, again, Ron Petko, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Noah Fredkin, he wrote, a uh, you know, bunch of papers on this, and there is a book on that if you're interested, um, you know, take a look, um, using this model to describe various processes. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, I guess the idea was to introduce you to somewhat different uh, way looking, you know, to look at, at the networks and to look at this information propagation, because in some sense, it is a method of information, you know, propagation, information aggregation, um, in the network. And, um, you know, I do think that if you look at the today's literature and today's textbooks, um, the, the, the original paper is sort of forgotten. Um, and, uh, you know, it's also a chance to actually, uh, you know, contribute something to research because, um, you know, there are a lot of things here that hasn't been yet investigated. That's it for today. Questions? Too easy. All right. Um, so today in the, uh, in the, at, the, at the seminar, Andre will work with you with a different model. Uh, it's called voter model. But you know, one of the sort of the, the ideas there is also reaching this you know agreement in between voters. Um, and will probably you know give you a chance to um, use this model to use the root model maybe in the, in, the, in the next project. Well then, that's it for today. Um, <laughs> <break>. <laughs>